you may have been wondering how you can create a beautifully shaped bell curve. For usually you only get this kind of curves based on your observations. We are going to simulate both situations. In this, in this column I calculated the probability for that specific bell curve. Based on a mean of 10 and a standard deviation or standard error of 0.2. And then in column A I calculated what would be the observations if there were randomness involved. So now we have both, so each time I press F9 the bell curve will not change but the observation change of course. Each time you do a new sample you get different results, different observations. So let us focus first on how did we do column F and G. First of all you have to create the bins for your horizontal axis. The first bin is three times the standard deviation or standard error subtracted from the mean. So that is F1 minus F2 times 3. The next one is based on 60 more rows. 60 is a good number to get a, a, a nice grid system. So we do 6 times the standard deviations for 60 more rows. That is F5, that's the previous value we found plus 6 times the standard deviation divided by 60 and you copy that formula down all the way down. Okay. Then we calculate the probability for that. That is done with norm dist. The norm dist function is going to ask you what is the value you are evaluating. That is 9.4 and then 9.42. The mean is always F1, so lock it. The standard deviation is F2, lock it. Cumulative false and you copy that formula all the way down and it will calculate all of that. So that is that part. Now we are going to find this curve. We do that in column A and we use the function norm inverse. Norm inverse Yes, what is the probability and we use the rand function that creates a random number between 0 and 1. The mean is F1 locked, standard deviation F2 locked and it will automatically create a distribution around that mean of observations. So each time I press F9 all these values will change but those values will not change. So all we have to do next is find out about the observations, how they are distributed in their frequencies. So we made a bunch of bins again, and the bin is very simple again, that is F1, the mean, minus 3 times the standard deviation. 2 times. 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so minus 3, minus 2, minus 1 times the standard deviation, 0 times the standard deviation, and then plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4. And then calculate here the frequency of the observations. So in order to do so we need the frequency function, but the frequency function is an array function. So you have to select all the cells ahead of time. I always include one more, I call that a garbage can, um, that means that should be zero if there are no values left. And then you select the frequency function. The frequency function says A5 through A6, C5 through C12. Don't just click on OK, but do Control Shift OK or Control Shift Enter. And it will calculate the frequencies all the time of the observations in column A. So how do we get this now into that curve? Uh, the bell curve is, is very simple. You s probably want to start with that one. But I want to f find out how did I get this one. That is a little more complicated than you think. I'm going to delete that one. And all you have to do is the following. You copy the range. You don't have to include now that garbage can. You copy it. Control C. Then you click inside the chart to activate it. And in Excel 
2010 and 13, you go to Home Paste Special and it automatically comes up with this box. It says you want to add the cells as a new series of values, the Y values in the columns and the categories are the labels in the first column. But when you do that you will get a surprise because we are dealing with different units on the horizontal axis. So we want this to have a secondary x-axis and y-axis. How do you get a secondary y-axis? You select that range, right click, format the data series and you get immediately the option a secondary axis. But we also need a secondary x-axis. That is a little more complicated. You have to go to Design and add a chart element. Axis, secondary horizontal axis. Okay. Now it's, it took from the previous one that this has to be an area chart, but it shouldn't be, so we are going to change the chart type. And instead of an area chart, we are going to say we want this one. And OK it. And now we have both done beautifully. F9, you will see that the observations keep changing, of course, because we have a relatively large sample, but still it's small. And the other curve, the bell curve, is based on the population the entire population. You want to know much more about how to make all these things, so I developed for you a CD-ROM and a book, Excel 2013 for Scientists. It's also u useful in 2010 and 2007. And look at all you get on these beautiful tools. You can find them at genesispc.org.